Good, hello everyone. Welcome to this session. My name is Martina, I'm the moderator, so I'll be with you with the mic for questions at the end. But for now, I'm, my only task is to introduce Brian to you, who's gonna do the talk now. So Brian, give it a go. Thank you. And it's good to see such a sizable number of people here and that you're not actually listening to Simone's talk uh, explaining why you should use questionnaires rather than compositions, uh, which would have been a really good talk, and I think you should all watch that after the session, uh, so don't leave. Uh, this is really good. And so let's get cracking into it. So SDC, pre-population, and data extract. So before I crack into that, uh, who am I? Um, Brian Posselwaite. Um, I'm a senior so software engineer from Microsoft Research and based down in Australia. Um, so I'm in a different time zone to this usually, uh, but I've been here for a month, so I'm fully acclimatised. So any problems is not due to jet lag, which I should have really not worried about that. But I've been working with Fire for roughly 10 years, so pre-DSTU2. Um, I'm on the Fire Management Group. I'm a co-chair at Patient Administration and one of the developers or contributors to the Fire SDK, uh, the Firepath spec, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And yeah, SDC is one of my big passions. So what we're gonna cover today is really a quick recap on what we covered in the earlier session, um, sort of highlighting where does um, the pre-pop and extract fit into the overall workflow, and then walk through as two parts, the pre-population side, the various options we've got with that, and then the extract side, so what do we do with after we've collected the data um, and what are the options we've got with that, which is cool. So our typical workflows as we went through the other morning is, yeah, locating a questionnaire for use, uh, working out where we got that from, what we need, and then load that into a questionnaire. And of course, the part we're really interested in is pre-populating that data, reduce the burden on the the users that's dealing with that to pre-fill as much as we possibly can. And so this is around the detail on what we fill in there. And then once they've done that filling in and we've got that questionnaire response, whether it's stored or not, um, what do we do with that so we can turn it into other um, formats and then persist it or put it somewhere else. So our questionnaire basics, it's really the questionnaire resource, which is the definitional side, which could link into the terminologies, and then the questionnaire response, which is filling that content out, uh, which really mirrors that relationship between source and data, and our link ID joins the specific questions in between. And yes, and just to reiterate, don't profile questionnaires. Refer back to the other session if you wanted a good reason for why you would do that. So what is SDC? So Structured Data Capture is an implementation guide that adds all the real meat to the functionalities and behaviours that you really expect to find with questionnaires that is not in the core uh, specification. So we wanted to put that in a separate guide rather than in the core spec so we could iterate on that and make it a lot more capable um, at a, a faster iteration. And the two specific parts that we're interested in uh, the populate and the extract. Uh, from the IG's perspective, we're heading towards another R4 release to try and tidy up all of the little loose ends that we've had, some of the extra functionality that we've jam-packed in there. Um, and there's, as you go through this slide presentation, um, there's a couple of trackers to, yes, there are known issues and we know what they are and we are still getting them applied. Cool. And yeah, importing forms and extracting forms. So really, where does the information flow? We start off with that questionnaire, um, which has inside it some pre-population rules. So depending on which of the methods that you want to apply, um, they can be embedded within. And then there's extraction rules, which are the, the other side of the picture. So they all fall within the definition. So when we ship that around, um, it's easier to contain them, um, So which is kind of neat. Then we take that, we can pass those to a pre-population service which can then pull out of the launch context, so who's the patient and practitioner that's dealing with it, um, and also from fire services um, or fire documents to get that content into the form definition and do that pre-population. 
which then spits out a questionnaire response. So this is not necessarily a server infrastructure di diagram. It's more about the information flow or the logical flow. And then we can leverage that questionnaire along with the response and an extract service to actually pull that out and produce some content. So does that all make sense? Yep, excellent. So we're all on the same page. So we'll dig into the questionnaire pre-population stage. So it's all in the spec, so I'll click through that. So this is the actual form pre-population. Big page, not going to try and go through all of that right now um, because that's the whole point of the presentation. Uh, we really have the populate operation and it covers observation, expression, structure map. So when you want to get that more detail, there is the documentation in that as well. So this is really cool. So when we want to do the population, we require to have a context or a source of where is this information coming from. So is it coming out of the clinical system? Is it coming out of a fire service? Is it coming out of some other source structured document, um, like an uh, IPS or something? Uh, you need a mapping to say where does that content go into the definition, into the questionnaire, and then a processing engine, and you need to know both sides of the picture, so which is what mapping is all about. And then we have the dollar populate operation itself. So the, the whole idea here is that you can have a separated service away from your rendering engine. So with that SDC guide, how we had those different blocks, we can make the populate capacity something that's outside of the rendering engine. It doesn't mean that you can't put that functionality in a rendering engine, uh, which we have some implementations that do that, but it leaves the flexibility for your design and deployment to work that out. So inside the population, the three main ones we've got are observation-based, uh, fire path-based, and structure map-based. So what's the real difference between them? The, the reason we've got multiple choices is because that there's different complexities involved in defining each of these things. Uh, so depending on what your needs are for doing a population, so if all you're grabbing is some observation data out of some existing resources, the observation option is the lightest weight, basically, you'll, uh, which I'll walk into. Uh, fire path gives a, a next level of granularity to pick, and then the structure map is the super flexible, but also the most complex. So we'll walk into that. So the operation itself takes in the input parameters, either a post to the type or a post to the instance level. Uh, so if you're posting to the type level, then you need to pass the questionnaire that's going to be processed as well. Or if you pass to the questionnaire instance level, then the server already has that definition, so you don't need to pass it again. Um, but you'll always need to pass the subject ID because when it's pre-populated that, that's the patient it's gonna use to go and grab the data, pretty obvious. Um, but in cases where it's a, a separated um, service where it's not gonna be accessing the data, you can also pass that patient context and other context-related data into it. So I'll just quickly click in. So you can see the document, so we have the identifier, so if you're matching up, so these first handful of items, uh, how do you select, how does the service select the questionnaire to run? Uh, so either the actual thing or a link to go and get it. Then the subject, uh, which is going to, plus some context, which could be other uh, forms of information. And then output will come out a questionnaire response, which is not typically wrapped in a parameters object. So as with the normal fire spec, if you've got a single property coming out, which is the response, then that's what you'll get. So with no parameters, which is really neat. And if there's issues that go on, you will we'll get a parameters, or if it's an actual error, uh, you'll get a just straight operation outcome. So if you wanna go through those, I won't drill into them, but grab the slides off uh, Hoover later and you'll see those URLs. Uh, specifically, it was around the context, not being able to pass resources. Uh, so that was the main change that was there, so to fix that up. 
Cool. So once again, so our observation base, so let's walk into that with a bit of detail. So it's the lowest flexibility um, to map. It's always going to be based on a parameter um, or the smart context is where you might pull that parameter. Uh, you then, in the item.code, include the loink or snowmed or other coding if you're using other code systems uh, to do the search. And then the link period, which tells you how far back is valid to look for this particular item. So that's cool. And then you can choose what content comes out um, based on the categories, which I'll look at the uh, sample in a second. Uh, and with Loink, you can have things like a patient birth date, but that's not a, an always expected. So some servers may choose to do that if they have that understanding. So what does one look like? Here's a, a sample of that with our observation link period at the top to say look for three months worth of observations. And then we can see here's our Loink code for body weight and our Loink weight for measured. So we've got two different codes there and a dry weight. So there's a choice of each of those three might be the appropriate code to read in for that value. And then when it comes out, um, yeah, in kilograms and pounds. So during the pre-pop stage, that's the sort of query that you could use to evaluate that. Pretty simple. So, fire path based. Um, so once again, you start with that same context. This will come from extensions with launch context, which gives you the chance to say, I need the patient, I need the practitioner. So if you wanna pull data from both of those, or I need an IPA document, um, those are the things that you can say, this is my requirement that you need. And then it gets littered with uh, initial expressions that actually tag this question needs to read from that data source. And yes, you need knowledge of fire path and fire queries, and you can leverage variables or within that space to get some. And so I thought instead of going through the others, let's have a look at a demo. So this is a simple form, hoping that that's actually visible. That's good enough. So here we got an empty form. So on the end here, we have IPS pre-pop six. So I did a handful of different iterations on it. And we can say we've got some simple demographics to start off with, and then a table of medications and some allergies. So that's a pretty normal sort of thing that you might wanna do. Uh, and then if we look at our um, definition, so we've got our IPS as a bundle. So in that extension we were referring to, so is our launch context says, yes, I need an IPS bundle, which we have. So this is the IPS bundle on the right. And so I'm going to say pre-fill from that medical record. And blam, that talks to that engine to pull that data and run that out using those FirePath expressions. So if I walk down and find one of these expressions. So here we go, there's the full name. So we can see from pat name, I'm going to read the text or the family or the given. So there's a nice fire path expression to go and grab the name out of that IPS and it's going to do some formatting. So it's not a one-to-one -one field mapping. Um, I've looked in to see if there is a text, then I'll just use that. If there's a name, I'll do some um, formatting to try and bring it in to make it look nice and clean like that. So, which is really neat. And we can see down further, we've got the capacity to read a group of, because there was a group of medications in that bundle from the IPS, I can populate that table and read out individual records out of that into the table. Super cool stuff. All right, so that was kind of neat. I went through that. Now the structure map based pre-population is the most complex area and do I have that? He says clicking the button blindly. Yep, so this is what one of the maps look like um, to take it. So it expects to have a bundle on the way in. So that's, that's the result. Um, and then going further down from that, we're going to produce a questionnaire response. And so our source and target. 
And so our source is going to pre-populate an explicit value. And so each of the properties in that questionnaire response is going to be explicitly um, tagged based on wherever it is. So if I look at here, so we've walked into, here we go. So we're reading a patient entry dot full URL dot string. So it actually read the subject out of the patient resource entry in the bundle. So it can get pretty complicated, um, but once you sort of get in practice and start seeing what those are, um, that's quite cool. I'm just wondering, do I have the tester? And I do have a fire, so in the Firepath Lab, which is a testing tool that I've written, uh, there is a mapping engine tester. Um, so you can go and see those maps and test out a map and evaluate it against, so map only. So you can take the map and then run that against a specific test and get a result. So in this particular case, it's not a pre-pop one, but it's just an, another uh, example. So, cool, back to our slides. Uh, yep, cool. So that was the pre-population side, so I didn't try to drill into that too heavily. Um, but the other space, so in the, the dev version of the Firepath Lab, so this is dev.firepathlab.com. Um, there's a new section within that will check out. Uh, so if your definition has, so in this case it's got a launch context, then you'll get to see a pre-population section so you can get in and do the same sort of testing to verify that does this functionality work. And wouldn't you know I've clicked on the wrong one. So I'm going to close, that's the extract test. Always getting the wrong one. I'll come back to those. So I'll come back to some of those tests. So from the extract side, so once again, it's the same sort of architecture where we've got that dollar extract operation um, to mask where that implementation is um, as one of the options. We require where it's going to go. Is this going to be a create or update? Yeah, the mapping, the processing engine. And to do that mapping, you need the knowledge of the structures on both sides. And currently we have observation-based extraction, which once again is the simplest option, a definition-based, which is not Firepath, um, so it's using the definitions inside structure definitions to understand uh, which particular field out of a profile that does this data need to go into. And then, of course, the, the uber-flexible structure map approach. And there's a fourth option that's currently being uh, worked through um, is a template-based template -based approach. But I'll get back to that uh, later on. So our extract operation... Just the same, our definition is either run on the questionnaire response, because remember this is running on the completed data, not on the definition, and it will get to the definition through the completed data reference, um, and it could be on an instance or the ID itself, the type, and then it'll come out as the response, which is typically a bundle, a transaction bundle. And yep, so there's a questionnaire response, input, get the parameters, and then we get an output. Um, or an operation outcome saying that yes, there's an error. Always expect that. So um, observation-based extractions is really as simple as including that link or SNOMED or other codings that you want to extract and then a tag in it to actually say, uh, do the extraction on this particular pro pro uh, property. So we'll go to a, a demo of this. So you'll note that all my syntax highlighting is gone in here at the moment. That will be back in the next week or so. Um, I'm just glad it was working at all uh, for, for today. Uh, it started working last night at about midnight, so I'm pretty, pretty stoked that that was deployed. It was working locally for the last week, and when I got on the plane... Uh, yeah, anyway, long story. So once... Once again, it detects that, yes, there is an extract tag within. 
So if I go through, we'll find a link period to say yes, and here's a tag to say this specific question, so these height, weight, vocal, vitals will be extracted as an observation. So there's a little tag, mark that to say yes, I would like to have that come out. And that's the only little bit of data that we've put into this questionnaire to say I want this to be an extract. So that's, that's super cool. So instead of getting all excited, let's actually say, oh, how much has my weight going? Uh, we'll just pretend that it's that much. Um, apparently, I'm wearing my underwear or less. That's my worst nightmare in front of people, but <laughs> let's not worry. Uh, 176. Uh, apparently, my BMI is not calculating, but we'll ignore that part. Um, and so we get that questionnaire response. So there's our data that's been entered in, 176. And now we've got this new capacity to extract that. And so it's going to run back to whichever implementation is running it. And so in this case, we've got that dollar extract, run the extract, and there we go, that that's actually producing now a bundle with our observations, with our weight of a great big lie, and another one for the height. So you see how little effort it took to actually mark up that questionnaire for observation, and then we get that out. So that's, that's a really cool, cool trick. Very nice, that works perfect. And if you wanted to run that against a different engine, then you would just change the URL to this. So I was hoping to also have the happy instance with the CQL dollar evaluate in there uh, and see that run, but unfortunately didn't get quite there. Um, but it should work. So that's ex observation extract. So definitional, um, so it's very similar in terms of the uh, what you can do with it, you can go to any resource type or any profile and use those to create um, those instances. But because you can't do any splits or any manipulations with that content, uh, the structure of how you present your questionnaire is really defined by how you're going to pull it out. So it, it takes a lot of that flexibility out. Um, so I have one of these loaded. He says, hoping he can find the link. In fact, I did have a link in there, didn't I? Yep. So just follow the link, it'll just work. So here is a definitional, one with the definitions in it. And so inside we'll find on, so here's my practitioner dot, no, let's just show you what the form is. So the idea of this one, it's about creating a practitioner resource. So who creates practitioner resources, right? But anyway, it's a good demo. Um, so we can create, yes, active, male. Uh, apparently I was born last week, last month. Um, a live demo, Brian, no really. And brianpost.com, great site, uh, no plug. And yes, um, Q1, Q1 disp, issued by myself. And we can add another item. So here we go, we can actually, using those repeating groups to add more qualifications, I'll add a Q2, sorry, did I? Add item, Q2. Q2, yeah, still me. And then we've got this third item, which is not associated with that grouping, so it's a separate group. Um, and I'm just going to say this is commcert, blah, 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 issued by University of Minnesota, since that's where we are. And I can say show the response, so which will produce the sort of response that we'd expect to see. Uh, which is not that exciting. But I can go to my extract tab and I'll go and grab the other engine. Uh, so this is, uh, and of course that's going to change, isn't it? All right, I'm just going to have to remember that's the engine. So this is an alternative engine that has the definition based 
uh, implemented inside. So totally separate code bases that have nothing to do with each other. Uh, we can run that. And there we see. So we, there we get our bundle with our practitioner. Uh, live demo, yes, that's really me. It put my work other. So this all was based on the those profiles for specifically. Now, interestingly, the question, the qualifications, if you remember that there was two groups and then a separate group which was totally separate. Um, and so because that, that group in the definition, um, each of those has come through. But I can see this one has a text in it, whereas these others didn't. And that was from fixed data in the profile, so which is really kind of neat. So if I go back and look at uh, the definition, he hopes. So that's, so that is. All right, so this is the definition for that HCX de practitioner. So we can see in there we've got our practitioner. It's all pretty ordinary. And there's an extensions, referral methods, and classifications. And I was hoping to see, where is it there? So here we have, we've got a slice for community three, which is how we ended up getting that qualification with the fixed text of certificate community care. So by having stuff in the profile, uh, we can get that back in, which is kind of powerful, but it's also really tightly bound to each other. So that's the other um, drawback there. All right, I'll step. Yep, so we covered that. Now the structure map is the, the last of those options uh, for going through. And with that, so we also have another demo for that. And I'll expand this out so we can see a little. So within the definition, we end up having uh, this one uses some variables. Hang on, is that the one? Yeah, this is the one. But most importantly, we have our structure map. So there's a link to the target structure map, which says this is the structure map that you need to run. Um, and there is the canonical to that. And apart from that, it's just a normal questionnaire. So if we go and fill that out, um, I'm often, often true, never true, uh, no risk. So once again, show those responses, and then we can run that extract uh, from the engine, and that goes and produces that data. So if I go and expand that out and have a look at our renderer, lock that in and put that extract back here. So we should be able to find all of those details in terms of we had the profile set, the status, category, uh, social history. So you can see there's a whole lot more data that's been produced by the structure map um, than you could get out of a, a definitional approach. And he's hoping to get, so here we go. Value coding, often true. So there's that one. So if I wanted to go and change that to uh, sometimes true, show a response, Extract that, so we'll now see sometimes true. So that shows that it is actually going through that map. Uh, so where is that map? We'll go have a quick look at those structure maps. Uh, this was the hunger map vital signs map. He says, and of course that's where I wanna be in my local build. Yep. So sources, structure maps, vital sign, and here's the map. So it shows we've got our map definition, uh, where it's coming from, which is coming from a questionnaire response. It's gonna use the a bundle observation, a condition, and a, um, so two profiles on observation. So it's got the handful coming out. Uh, so when it's got our questionnaire coming in, we're gonna produce a bundle. The bundle's gonna have a specific ID, um, a specific bundle type, which is transaction. And then we've got some cases. So when we've got the first item, so when we're looking at a, an answer that has this specific link ID, then we're gonna create 
a specific observation out of that, and then we're going to transform that observation with these answers. And then the similar thing, so when we've got our question, uh, we'll produce that, uh, and as it goes down, so then we go down to here's our transform observation, which is taking the item, the target that's being filled in, and also an entry bundle. Um, so you're producing more, we're going to fill in the that final status, we're going to put in a meta, indicate the profile that's going on, we're going to fill in the category, the observation category, another concept within. So you can see it's, it's not that bad from a complexity point of view. Once you start seeing a few examples, um, it's actually not that bad. And then we can get down further and we can nest and call other functions on that same information. So that's where you get to. Um, and I'm just seeing where is one of these. And eventually you end up um, transform derived, so you can do a few different types of modifications. And then we want to create a group observation which links each of those other three ones that we produced. So if I can go back to that, it would be really good. Uh, extract. So we'll find down the bottom we have, where is it? Yeah, so a derived from, saying that that's where it came from, and we've got multiple values in there. And right at the end, we have the last observation it produced was the grouping um, observation, and that has links to the each of those members, so have, has member observations. So that's, that's kind of cool. You can't do that sort of thing with a definition or an observation. Um, you need that extra level of power. Cool. And yeah, one last thing while I'm in there. There's a mapping tool. So there, there's two um, main implementations. Or the primary one is the happy uh, provided fire mapping engine, uh, which you can go and test uh, from here. Um, and I did a direct port of that engine into .NET. Uh, and so that's also on GitHub and NuGet if you want to go and try that out as well, which is really cool. Uh, yes, we just went and did that. So that was the prepare uh, demo that I did. And so the extract template approach. So this is a really a work in progress um, that uh, we had someone from the community come in and say, hey, uh, we want to try this template approach uh, where we take an existing resource, um, say a condition, and then we're going to mark that up with where the content comes from um, in, the, in the resource. So there's a, a link here to where that draft is at um, and the link to the Jira issue that's tracking it. And I opened up a new session on Zulip, so if people want to contribute um, and put back in. Um, so the idea being extract a template, um, include that, and it has each of those contents. And let's see if we can scroll down to a sample. So here's a contained observation that's been pre-filled out with some stuff. And then you try and tag to say this one. So we'd have to put an extension on that reference to say this field needs to be replaced out of the definition. And so that's where we're starting to work out is um, how are we going to do that? And so that's that's the approach we're work, working through and uh, trying it out. If, if anyone else wants to get involved, I mean, we've got a few here that, that are keen on that. So do. So what tooling is out there for trying this out? Um, there's the TypeScript engine, uh, JavaScript, um, CSIRO have implemented the observation prepop and extract. Um, and the Firepath.js is used for basically most of those engines. Uh, my Firepath engine with .NET and Java has the Firepath engine and Fire Mapping language. Uh, there's also a CQL-based uh, dollar extract um, that the, I can't remember which group, sorry, um, is providing, so I didn't get to test that today. Uh, and yeah, you've seen the, the forms section in the testing lab that in the next couple of weeks that'll go out of the, that dev site and into the, the prod area. Uh, but yeah, super happy with having that. Uh, yeah. So um, I think I'm right on questionnaire time. So pre-population and data extraction using SDC is awesome. 
Love it, love it. Um, yep, went through each of those things. So some of the tools that's out there now. And yeah, you know where to find me, uh, what's going on. And yeah, there's Firepath, so if you're in the Firepath space, uh, Firepath session tomorrow, and elect build following on to that. So with that, I'll open for questions and hope everything keeps working. <laughs> well, we have another nice 10 minutes to go, so there's definitely room for questions. Good. So on the pre-population side, I'm assuming that you are pulling the data from the other fire resources that are already there. Yes. Is it, for us in, in real life situation, probably most of the, some of the data is not in fire. We may have to pull the data from different sources. Um, is it possible to like, to allow a plugin or something where you can pull the data from other sources as well besides the so fire? The, there's, there's several answers I could give to that. The, the first one I'll give is, because we've got that dollar populate operation um, as separate to the fire definition, so you can hide that sort of stuff behind the standard dollar populate. So you could have some internal rules of your own um, and some other markup that you put in a definition that you understand, and then you can run that internally. But from a user that's using it, uh, if they go and use your populate, it would work as though it was real fire. Um, so the, the other answer I could give is the fire path based approach. Uh, you can run fire path on other things than just fire. Um, so it's not a fire only spec. Um, so you could pass it a raw, a CDA document, for example, or a CCDA, and then put uh, fire path expressions expecting to navigate through that XML. Uh, you'd need to have a fire path that'll run across the XML, uh, but those things exist. Um, you can definitely do with the the .NET Firepath engine and possibly with the, um, the happy one. Uh, if it's just a random JSON blob, uh, you can use the Firepath JS with that as well. So you've got, yeah, you can sort of mix and match a little bit. Does that sort of answer the question? Yep. Any more questions? Thank you. Um, are there any tools out there for non-technical people to build questionnaires? Yes. So there's the, um, is Paul back there somewhere? <coughs> yep, I got you. Um, so the National Library of Medicine has a forms builder um, that you can use. There's uh, Aidbox have just released one of theirs. Um, and the, there are several others. Um, but those are the, the primary ones. Um, there's several renderers, so if I go to my local build and have another look back in there to that form tester, so you'll note that, yes, I've got the CSRO as rendering engine, I've got the LHC forms as rendering engine, so these are open engines, and Aidbox is new engine. Um, I'm just getting in there as well, so that's a bit of a work in progress, um, but that will appear. And there are others as well. Yeah. And you probably saw my other session we're trying out with the um, natural natural language or AI chat to go and create some stuff, which is kind of neat. Yeah, my, my, my stuff. Yep. Yeah, my, my organization would rather have non-technical users use a content management system to yep. author the form and then wish for us to build all of this functionality after the fact when I would love to convince them that, well, if we just started with, with the questionnaire, it'd be a lot easier to support this. Yep, yep. The other thing, so I won't drill into it too hard, but the, the other thing is I've, sorry, in some former companies that I used to work for um, that had, like every other company that's been um, from takeovers and mergers and what have you, they end up with four or five different surveys and forms engines um, and like I did implementations to migrate each of those definitions into questionnaires and pretty much you got full, full capacity. So if you had questionnaire definitions in some other format, yeah, doing the migrations isn't hard. You go, yeah. 
So I just want to add a comment. I have a talk at 4.45 uh, talking about the tools, questionnaire tools developed at the NM, which include a form builder. And I think you, you're welcome to. <laughs> and I have a question for Brian. Is that the, the template-based extraction, when that will be ready? Uh, when we get enough people to, to get in and uh, getting some more samples to create some of them and see whether it's actually going to be functional. Um, so my initial impression was, in theory, it seems like a really good idea. Um, and if all you're doing is replacing two or three fields, it probably is a good idea. Uh, but if you're going to do replacing large contents, you, you end up doing something more difficult anyway. Uh, but uh, we're going to still um, go through the process and, and see what it looks like before we say yes or no either way. Um, so, yeah. so we're going to get something that's basically working uh, and then put that back into the committee and say, um, this is the proposal. Um, what do people think? Do they like it? Do we want to keep it? Uh, what do we want to do with it? So that's, that's the process. Is that related to the liquid language that Microsoft used in Azure? No. no nothing to do? No. Okay. No. Sorry. <laughs> and I should say sorry. To, yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Then I think we can uh, thank Brian for a nice presentation. Cool. Thank you.